to extract or not? This has been a great debate within orthodontics for more than a hundred years, and it doesn't seem to have been resolved as yet. The pendulum has swung backwards and forwards between non-extraction and extraction several times. Um, orthodontics as we know it started around the beginning of the 1900s. One of the main proprietors was Edward Angle, who felt you should never extract, you should never extract in a case. And at the time, in the beginning of the 1900s, if you extracted, you were considered a complete fool. You were thrown out of organisations. Um, it was heresy to extract teeth in order to gain orthodontic correction. Then, in the middle of the 1900s, you had people like Raymond Begg from Australia, who had looked at the Aboriginal teeth and noticed a lot of wear. And you saw people like Charles Tweed, who was a student of Edward Angles. And these people decided that they were going to extract, and the extraction became almost normal. In the middle of the 1900s, you were a fool or um, a charlatan if you didn't extract teeth. And then, more recently, we've come to a, a mixture of these two, where in some, pe some situations people would extract, some situations people wouldn't extract. However, it largely depends on the individual t undertaking the therapy. And although many people say they extract less teeth than they did before, a lot of teeth are still extracted for orthodontic therapy. And Historically, from this division between the extraction and non-extraction, I think that it suggests there's a more subtle and more complex argument than simply to extract or not to extract. 